Hello, I'm Mercedes Stevenson, and this is the West Block, politics, perspectives, and players. Former Attorney General Jody Wilson-Raybould told the Justice Committee last week she experienced a consistent and sustained effort by the most powerful people within government, including the Prime Minister, to politically interfere in her decision on the criminal prosecution of the Quebec-based company SNC-Lavalin. Joining me now from Montreal is the Attorney General and Justice Minister David Lametti. Minister and Attorney General, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, Minister, we heard testimony from Jody Wilson-Raybould this week. She alleges that she was under a campaign of sustained pressure for months that she described as inappropriate. The Prime Minister disagreed with her assessment. Who do you believe? Well, look, I wasn't there, so I, I wasn't privy to any of those discussions. Uh, so I can't really say. Uh, I can tell you what they both agreed on, uh, which is both of them have said, uh, my predecessor in her testimony in front of the committee and the prime minister, both have said that, that they felt nothing was illegal. And so we can agree on that part of the narrative. As for the rest of it, I can't, uh, I can't say because I wasn't there. Can something be legal without being moral, though? Well, look, there's something called the Shawcross Principle uh, that, that governs, uh, I suppose, the relationship between Cabinet and the Attorney General in these kinds of affairs. Uh, I, can, uh, I can speak to that generally in the sense that the, the Shawcross Doctrine says that the, the Attorney General isn't an island, that the Attorney General can have conversations with his or her Cabinet colleagues, uh, but at the end of the day has to make a decision uh, on his or her own. Uh, so one, once again, I can't put myself into my predecessor's shoes to know to know uh, what she was feeling, or or even to, to appreciate what but others Minister, were doing. If, but the if standard. You, if let, the me just say, let me just say the standard is pretty high. The attorney well, general in this case had made a decision. This wasn't consultation in advance of the decision. She's saying that she told people she thought the pressure was inappropriate, that she had made her decision, and that she was being pushed to change that decision. Some of the things she alleges were said include that any any solution would require some kind of interference under the law, uh, that the PMO didn't want to debate legalities anymore, and that there was an election. Are those reasons that you should have an attorney general interfering in a criminal prosecution of a, a corruption trial? Right. Again, I, I can't uh, I can't speak to how what people said or how people felt because I, I wasn't I wasn't part of that. But if decision. someone approached what you I can and said say, an election well, is at stake, would that be a persuasive well, argument to you? It, it, it again, it depends on the context. The, the leading case from so wait, the UK. So sorry, just to stop well, you there. Leading, but an no, election but the leading, could be a reason for an attorney general to interfere it, 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 in a criminal prosecution. That would be appropriate. I'm not saying it would be appropriate or inappropriate uh, because I wasn't there and I don't know the context. But how could, but, it, how but could but winning I will, an election I will ever tell be an appropriate you, reason for an attorney me, general to intervene in the justice system? Let me tell you uh, the leading case from the UK, which went to the House of Lords in 2008. So it's a fairly recent case. It was the Saudi government putting pressure on uh, Tony Blair's government in the UK. Tony Blair, as prime minister and other ministers, called the attorney general and said, if you go ahead with this inquiry, there will be blood in the streets. Um, and the House of Lords found nothing wrong with that. But so they, they felt it was not an inappropriate uh, amount sir, of pressure in, in, to put on the attorney general. We both know that in the United Kingdom, the attorney general does not sit in cabinet and is not appointed by the prime minister. So there's no consequence if the attorney general doesn't listen to the prime minister, unlike here in Canada, where if you don't do what the prime minister says, he could demote you. Um, well, you can, also, you can also be moved in the UK as Attorney General. You're still appointed by the Prime Minister. Um, so you could make the argument, actually, that, that the argument is actually stronger. Uh, in, in, uh, you, the argument from the UK extrapolated would actually go in the opposite direction to the, to the man. But are, are political portrayed. considerations for a party in power supposed to be something that is considered in our justice system? I mean, the cornerstone of democracy in Canada, a big one, is that we have an independent judiciary. And now you have cases where a politician is saying she was asked to intervene for political reasons and for jobs, not because there was an actual judicial reason and that she believed that was inappropriate. Again, according to the Shawcross Doctrine, uh, in general, political con considerations are uh, appropriate for discussion around the cabinet table. But and not after a Attorney decision General. is made. Well, let me let me add again. I, I wasn't at any of I wasn't at any of these conversations, so I can't evaluate the, the, the I can't evaluate the context. I can't evaluate the language that was used uh, and and the manner in which the conversations happened. And all of that's critical, actually, to trying to trying to decipher all of this. But what I can say is that that even as Attorney General, um, 
you do have an ongoing uh, obligation as Attorney General in terms of your relationship to prosecutions and the prosecution service to be open to new facts. Um, and, and, and so, again, I, I can't speak to the actual conversations that happened, but in, I know that in principle an Attorney General has to remain, uh, has to remain open. Uh, so in that sense, uh, no decision is ever final. The other thing to remember in this particular case um, and, and in the structure of our law, there is a legal structure in place in which the, the, the director of the prosecution service uh, makes an independent decision. If the attorney general, in uh, conjunction with cabinet colleagues uh, taking advice, takes a decision uh, to uh, issue a directive, and that directive is legal, so it's interference is... Uh, Interference is, is perhaps the wrong word in the sense that but, it implies that something illegal is going on. But Judy Wilson-Raybould had decided she was not going to do that. I mean, that's what the issue is here. It wasn't that she hadn't made her decision and they were lobbying her. She'd made her decision. She was asking them to back off. But let, let's go to you because it, I understand you weren't in the room for those decisions. So right. you are looking at the possibility of giving SNC-Lavalin a deal now, correct? I have, uh, as I have uh, said on a number of occasions, um, that is the law. That possibility exists. So uh, in why the would law. you, why would you decide? And, uh, or, that's or, not to say. Again, I, I'm I'm just going to add a very important caveat here, uh, because of what, uh, because everything I say uh, on this matter will be scrutinized, and because there is ongoing litigation, uh, I'm not going to say anything more than than what is obviously descriptive, which is. Uh, I'm up to speed on the file. I appreciate uh, that there is a legal possibility, but I'm, I'm not going to say one way or the other that I'm considering it or, or I'm not considering it. Were you aware when you took the file and, and became aware that this was a possibility still that your predecessor actually had made a decision on this and that the answer was no? I, I had not. I was a Montreal MP, as I said, so I was generally aware uh, of the file. Um, but I, did, I didn't have any, any specific knowledge uh, about, uh, well, I, I mean, I had, I had the knowledge that you and I both had, have, you know, reading the newspapers and, and, and seeing what's out on the media. Would, would it have given you pause if you'd been aware that Jody Wilson-Raybould had already said no to this? Would you have been willing to reopen it anyhow if you knew that the answer was already no? Again, I, I don't know, I wouldn't, at that point, I didn't know all the facts. At this point, I still don't know all the facts. Uh, and so I, I, it's a hypothetical question that I can't answer. Now, you've mentioned, you know, and the, the government has mentioned jobs in all of this, and it's something that the Prime Minister keeps mentioning and a number of cabinet ministers, but if you read the actual legislation, it says in the case of deferred prosecutions for companies like SNC-Lavalin, if they are facing the kinds of charges they are, which are corruption, economic considerations are off the table. So why does the government keep using jobs as an explanation if it doesn't qualify under the current rules? Well, again, I would, I would just point you back uh, to uh, the rules, because once again, anything that I say will get hyper-scrutinized. Uh, there, there are a number of provisions uh, in the Act uh, which, which open the possibility for looking at the impact on employees, uh, on, on uh, third-party contractors, uh, on shareholders, uh, and on pensioners. And so um, it, it, a lot is in the framing, but I, I would say that, that uh, and I would suggest to anybody who's interested in the file, to really take a, 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 a close, hard look uh, at the Act. But once again, I am not, uh, I am not saying one way or the other uh, that I am moving forward or not moving forward on this particular file. You spent many years as a very well-respected law professor. This is something that's going to be taught in law classes for years. If you were talking to your students, how would you explain to them the difference between appropriate and inappropriate pressure on an attorney general? Well, that, that's an interesting question. Uh, I obviously try not to engage uh, with... Uh, uh, actually, I actually can't really engage uh, in the same way with hypothetical questions as, as an elected member of parliament and cabinet minister as I could uh, when I was a student. Um, I, think, I think, as always, you try to raise uh, all aspects of the issue. You try to see everything from as many points of view as possible and try to, as best as possible, reconstruct the facts. Um, Again, I can't really go any further than that on this particular case, uh, simply because I don't, I don't, and can't possibly get uh, access to all of that information. Now we just have a couple of seconds left, but there is a letter submitted by five former attorneys general to the RCMP asking them to investigate. Your thoughts on that letter, sir? 
Well, again, I, I have no comment on it. The, what the RCMP does is entirely independent uh, of, of, uh, of my office, certainly as, as Attorney General. Um, and they, uh, they have a wonderful and proud tradition, uh, and they will continue to do the work that the, the good work that they do uh, for and on behalf of Canadians. Do you um, think that, that Canadians should be concerned? Because you hear this from Uber drivers, from Starbucks baristas, from all kinds of people, that prosecutorial independence in the justice system perhaps has been compromised if, if politicians can now interfere. What do you say to those Canadians at home who have those concerns? I think they can be assured that our prosecution service uh, is exceptionally well run. Uh, as, as the director uh, of public prosecution said a couple of weeks ago in a very public statement, uh, she feels that, that, they, that, all, of their that the, all of their investigations have been done independently and there hasn't okay. been interference. Well, that, the Jody I, I wilson Rabel did refuse to intervene, but uh, thank you very much, Minister. That's all the time that we have today. We appreciate you joining us. Thank you very much. Thanks so much for joining us, but that is all the time we have for today. However, for more politics from the West Block, please visit our website, thewestblock.ca, and be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And don't forget to check out our podcast, which is available wherever you get your favorite podcasts. For the West Block, I'm Mercedes Stevenson.